It's interesting. Good, good, good <laughs> spot there on the coach there, Phil. Looking good. If you're relaxed. If you if you're relaxed there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey everybody, um, welcome once again to the living room. Glad you can join us again. Thank you so much for the feedback on the first couple of episodes. Um, this is episode three, I think we are at now. Um, and thank you for joining us. Thank you for taking that journey with us as we just tell the stories from around the Caribbean in this season dealing with uh, COVID-19 and coronavirus. As usual, great friends, Mark and Philip with us. Um, so we're just going to get straight to it. How are you guys doing? How are you doing good? How are you doing, Mark? <laughs> you sure you're doing good, Mark? <laughs> I doing good. <laughs> you know <what> mean? <laughs> he looked like he's, he's in Zen at the moment. He's just like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what it is? I'm, a, I'm an early riser. So All right. Oh, six o'clock, seven is when I start to dip. Already? Six o'clock, even on Saturdays. Even, even especially on Saturdays. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> you need to football to get back. What's that? <laughs> you need a football to come back, man. I, I think so. <laughs> you need Miles to be like, Daddy, we need to go. We need to go. <laughs> yeah, just around that time, I would start to dip. And then if I, I'll have a bit of a, a freshness around 8 o'clock, and then 10 o'clock comes, and I go again. <laughs> wow. Wow. But, I, but then I have to keep myself up till midnight. Because if I, if I go to bed before midnight, by 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning, somehow my body's going to get up. Are you serious? Yeah. Yeah, man. This is, this is, this is, this is my plague. There's your nah, nah. Yeah, well, well, yeah. We don't have any of those kind of um, issues here in Wolverhampton. We, we, <laughs> <laughs> because of the Manchester thing. <laughs> I think it's a thing in, in, in the ear up north. Yeah, yeah. I, I just want to make sure that our viewers are, uh, you know, don't think that there's a cloud all, 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 all across England. I think that might just be a thing up in the north. Yeah. Thing. But I all good so. here, man. I can't complain. The first episode went, and the first couple of episodes actually went quite well. I was really pleased with that as well. So, all good? Yeah, I think this is going to be a good, interesting perspective we get today, talking to some people from Jamaica, uh, Kingston and St. Catherine, and get a perspective of what's happening there. It should be pretty interesting, actually. Yeah, and, you know, it, it still is a little bit surprising sometimes how, you know, we, we are Caribbean at heart, but sometimes it's so surprising how little we, we scan around and try to find out and observe what's going on elsewhere in all of the other islands. True. And, and Hopefully this, is, this, this afternoon will be a really good opportunity for people to engage with this particular um, episode. Yeah, no, you're right. I think there's something about being separated by water and not yeah. distance that makes a difference yeah. in how people view each other and keep in contact. Despite the commonality over the years and the attempts of carry on and what's not, despite that, you think that that should still be an issue or a mindset? It, it shouldn't be, but but it is. I don't know exactly why it's a mindset, but I, I just always think it has something to do with being an island. Um, and as an island, you're conditioned to be self-sufficient. True. You know, there's, there's not a large landmass that you're going to be connected to. So I think that that tends to put people in that mindset and way of living of not really looking at the rest of the world. Mm. Remember up when I, when I was a, a child up to 10, for me, Barbados was the biggest place in the world. I was so surprised <laughs> when I started studying geography <laughs> that I couldn't even find it on the world map. <laughs> You're like, where is it? Where is it? <laughs> yeah. But, but, but it's quite interesting that we're talking to Jamaica today because one of my Jamaican friends is always very, um, she, she's always very keen to let me know that Barbados is just a dot. A dot? I oh, didn't even find it. <laughs> I suspect I know who that is. <laughs> uh, that's crazy. But true, though, we, we, we are just a dot. But even in times like these, sometimes when you see the world coming together or trying to come together, we see sometimes the pros of being a dot and then sometimes the cons of being a dot as well, especially as far as isolation is concerned and getting stuff in and being able to interact yeah. with the rest of the world. There's some yeah. pros and cons to that. Um, yeah, it's interesting to see how it's working at this point in time. I think it will also be interesting to see whether, and I think, I think Phil's observation is a, is a very useful one, and, and I, do, I do share that. And I think it will be quite interesting to see whether that view changes post-COVID, mm. you know, mm. whether we come up with a different type of mentality. So I'll be interesting to observe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Interesting. I think there have been some good stories of collaboration between the islands. Um, I know like the Cayman Islands would have sent some medical equipment over to Barbados and mm. so on. So, so you're right, Mark. Maybe we will see a, 
a change in, in that collaboration across. Jamaica I, is also an interesting territory because they're quite a large, large island in comparison to Barbados. Yeah. Well, I certainly hope it changes because even from observing from afar and even looking at, you know, here in Europe and how the EU is working or not working in some cases, mm -hmm. this kind of stuff to me really hits home the need to, for CARICOM to work closely together, to have a united response, a united effort, yeah. especially in time of disaster, that yeah. we can be each other's, you know, each other's keeper in those kind of things. And, and this is really hitting home the need to work mm -hmm. together to try to find a way to be a bit more self-sufficient across the region, not just as an individual not island, as but individual. across the yeah. region. To me, that, that's one of the key things. Um, we got Stuart. Um, who's going to join us now from okay. Jamaica? Okay, well, looking gonna forward gonna to meeting Stuart. Us. He's going to join us in the living room, so I'm going to let him in. How are you doing, Stuart? Welcome. Hey, not too bad. How are you? I'm doing pretty good, man. Thanks right. for joining us here in the living room. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> I actually turned my room around because... I realized I didn't want to be too cliche. I actually have a Bob Marley poster behind me. <laughs> <laughs> you prop out Bob? Nice. So you choose yeah, a Ronaldo yeah. poster instead? Yeah, I can't be that. No, I can't be. I want to be stereotypical. I want to be a little different. I, I, I think at least, at least if, I, if I spotted the poster behind you correctly, you've got the right Ronaldo on the wall, I think. Oh, yes, only fat Ronaldo. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the right Ronaldo, I think. I think everyone would say that's the right one. That's the proper Ronaldo. Yeah, man. That's right. <laughs> exactly. So, how are things with you? How are you doing, Stray? Uh, I mean, the only. I'm good. I'm, I'm really good. The only issue I'm having is the slow step to madness as day, what, 52 of being in my house. <laughs> Um, knowing all my four corners, every wall, realizing that, you know, I should probably paint this room because I know see every crack in the walls. But outside of that, I'm happy. Um, family's okay. We are, we're managing. We're in a good position to manage. Mm. That's good. You said day 52. Where are you based oh, in no. Jamaica again? No, that was, that was, that's a, a stretch of a word. I was just picking a random oh, word Oh, okay. <laughs> that's something Jamaicans do? But I mean, I, <laughs> uh, I was like, day 52? <laughs> just, uh, yeah, that, that, that's just me. That's just, um, no, I, I'm based in St. Catherine, but in terms of actual days home, um, I'd say probably around... This is the second week now of full lockdown. So we're probably in about 10 days down. Just okay. completely at home, can't go anywhere. Completely. Yeah. I was just thinking, Stuart, uh, for, for my benefit and probably for benefit of some viewers, where, where is St. Catherine in relation to Kingston, Jamaica? We're, we're right beside Kingston, really. Um, okay. We are, uh, I am 20 minutes drive from Kingston on a no traffic day. Mm -hmm. um, on traffic days, it's, it's an hour, but yeah, it's, 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 we're right beside Kingston. We've got Charmaine joining as well. Oh, I heard so, but I don't see her. Yeah, she's coming <laughs> in right now. <laughs> she's coming, coming. She's coming. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, Charmaine, how are you doing? She's muted. You're on mute at the moment. I was looking for the button. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. So welcome. But one of my Sh cameras red. Thanks. Sorry. Welcome, Charmin. <laughs> and welcome to our living room to both Charmin and Stuart. The concept that we've got here is pretty much just a Caribbean living room. When guests come over, you know, you go into the living room, you have a chat. And we wanted to pretty much do the same thing, but obviously on Zoom and online at this time, join yeah. everyone's dealing with COVID-19. But I think everyone likes to understand the experience that some of the other islands are, are having across the region as well. So that's what we've got, and that's what we've put together here with the living room. So to both of you, welcome. Thanks. Thanks. So, so Charmaine and, and Stuart, you're on with both myself, Mark, and, and Andrea, and Philip, and you know, this, this Jamaican perspective is going to be quite interesting for our viewers. And I wonder if you can give us, and first of all, Charmaine, how are you? Um, how are you doing? How is your family? I'm pretty good. I think everybody is well. So, um, so far, 
I have nothing bad to say. Um, mm -hmm. I think just a little bit stir crazy, but <laughs> that's the worst of it. Yeah, and I, I think a, a lot of us are feeling the exact same, you know, after being in, in this lockdown situation, something we never anticipated. But we, we are pretty much the same over here in the UK as well, actually. Mm. Day 52. <laughs> I was going to say, it might even be worse for you in the UK than it is here. So, there you go. Yeah, the UK, you know, we, we've had some pretty interesting experiences, obviously, a high death toll as well as high instances right. of, um, you know, the, the virus spreading mm -hmm. and what's not. Um, but all in all, I think some of the measures put in place are beginning to, to work, um, despite the fact the death toll is still relatively high. Um, but the new amount of cases is beginning to slow down now. So this is yeah. what, week four, week five of our lockdown? Across week the, five, yeah, yeah, five, yeah. Depending yes. on when you started. Depend, yeah, that's true. Well, London started pretty early. Um, yeah. And our office at work started pretty early as well. I think before the right. official lockdown, our offices said, don't come in the office. Um, hmm. So that's been a pretty interesting experience. Well, I've been working from home for the last couple of months, so it wasn't very different for me, okay. except for the fact that, no, I can't go out, which is worse, <laughs> mm. in a way. Even someone who really enjoys being at home, um, you can't go have a glass of wine with your friends or go get something to eat. Um, some of the things that we take for granted, going mm. to the supermarket, um, have gone. So it's been a really interesting time however to be honest with you i'm on the um lockdown team i would really rather more um restrictions just so that um the numbers fall rather than um less to be quite honest with you so to tell you the truth um i would actually you know you s there's a curfew now from six to six right. um yeah. here and so you, but other than that, you can go, um, you're encouraged to practice safe distancing. And I'm mm -hmm. going to tell you that, um, and I think Stuart would probably agree with me, there are people who are practicing it more than others. So, um, so Stuart, are you also on team lockdown? Or? Uh, uh, it's, it's tricky for me because I've been locked down now, like completely locked down um, because I live in St. Catherine. Um, and our entire parish is on that note. Okay. I I can the stir crazy is a problem, and I I I say that because I'm, I'm answering your question, but in a roundabout way. Sorry, but um the issue, the problem why I'm not complete agreeing with complete lockdown is because I know that not everybody is having as good a time as me, and that's where my biggest concern lies. Is because I mean. Mm -hmm. I have I work every day. I still have my work and I still have you see the TV behind me. I have a PS4 connected to it. I have those means of, of actually entertaining myself, but I know other people don't. And that's where I am at the balance I think is difficult because I I can't imagine not having my PS4. I completely mad I have been bouncing off the walls already. And, but I mean, anything to stop it sooner. If, if we can stop it in two weeks by complete lockdown, I, I'd agree with you. Just lock down everything, and if we fix it in two weeks, then I'm, I'm for it. Okay. So what's the what's the difference then, Stuart, between what's happening in St. Catherine and what's happening in Kingston? Have people responded differently across the two parishes and and and, and in city? Um, well, the problem started with a call center. Um, there's a call center called Alarica um, in Portmore. Apparently, somebody with COVID went into work and there's just been a spread there. That The call center is now the epicenter of COVID cases in Jamaica. I think half the cases oh. are, some, yeah, are, are from that same call center. Oh, wow. So as a result of that, the prime minister has decided that, you know, let's just close down the whole parish, stop movement within the parish, and try to gain control of the numbers. Mm. And that's, well, that, that's basically what happened. So um, the lockdown, I mean, the first week was pretty horrible because he had initially said, okay, we're giving you two days to shop and we're going to do it by last names and all sorts of stuff. But that didn't work out at all because, um, the lines at the supermarkets were ridiculous. Like, there, there are people yeah. standing 
right beside each other, basically. They could not socially distance because there was simply not enough space. Um, then now he relaxed it a bit. I think we have four shopping days. No, I think it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. Yeah, our shopping days. So it's, it's a bit better now. But um, for the most part, I mean, business is down. So, you know, people are becoming increasingly idle and nobody's making any money. So it's, it's, it's kind of rough. It's kind of rough. And generally, though, how, how are people there in St. Catharines? Because I guess there, there are different measures in St. Catharines than there are in Kingston. Um, how are people then fully reacting towards, you know, now that you're in a few weeks into it, how are people reacting? I, mean, um, I know, I know. I can. I remember reading that there's so many fishermen were a bit up in arms recently. Yeah, uh, that's the thing. So the business is down, and in Saint Catherine, unlike in Kingston, you don't have as much, I'd say, office type jobs, mm -hmm. because I mean, Kingston is the business hub, so you will have buildings, you'd have more office jobs. Mm -hmm. But Saint Catherine has a lot of farmers. We have a lot of fishermen, a lot of informal work, and all of that is now being shot. Mm. Because I mean, they can't. Well, farmers, for example, can't make can't sell anything because nobody has enough money to buy anything. Yeah. And as a result of that, they can't maintain their farms. Um, same thing for the fishermen. Same thing for taxi drivers. Nobody's moving around, so it's hitting them the hardest. And so there is that increasing frustration coming from it. Um, the other good thing, well, I don't know if you call it a good thing. I mean, as I said, Kingston is a business hub, but mm -hmm. St. Catherine is actually like the dormitory for the business hub. So mm -hmm. a lot of people in St. Catherine at the same yeah, time I mean, yeah. are able to work from home mm -hmm. because most of us go into Kingston, me included. I work in Kingston um, every day. So um, because of that, I mean, I can't work from home. So some people are managing. Yeah. And that, but for the most part, the most of the St. Catherine population who has to stay in St. Catherine, I think are having a bit rougher time. Mm. Okay. And in yeah. terms of perspective then, Charmaine, how does that compare across in Kingston, in, in the um, business hub? Yeah, I think it's a little different in Kingston, meaning um, we don't have um, the restrictions that are clearly in St. Catherine. Um, but to be fair, I think those restrictions are coming. Um, our numbers have risen to 288. Um, that was last night. Um, so I think something definitive is going to come. Um, I've seen other countries who have successfully done it. I just came back from living in Trinidad. Trinidad has locked down. Their numbers are starting to slow. Um, I see um, Mr. Rowley is going to have a the Prime Minister is going to have a conversation with his people in a couple of hours. So a lot of people are speculating that he's going to say we can start to relax some of the things because they locked down really early. Restaurants can't, even yeah. though he says... Their borders and everything, they kind of shut it all down pretty early. Down. Down. And the yeah. people who did that actually are not faring badly. St. Lucia, for example, is now saying they're... Hmm. They have no more COVID cases. So everybody who had COVID there has recovered. Um, and so Dominica had, I think it was like 17 days of no um, positive cases. Mm, yeah. One came up, I think yesterday. Barbados has the same thing, like a one case. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but that, that, that's the thing. A lot of people really said, okay, let's not make this become a a thing early and um, have, have caught it and are managing it better than we are. Mm -hmm. um, to be fair, a lot of those countries kind of had, the numbers were higher than, than ours, in fact, um, for some. And, and, and Jamaica is big, has a bigger population than them. So I think they were, you know, justifiably a little more aggressive in their approach. Um, yeah. But no, yeah, we are... Once again, yeah. in the lead, which is even, not a good yeah. position to be in. Yeah, but that's thinking even in, in smaller smaller countries, it's still going to be a challenge to decide when do we reopen the borders. Because yeah. even if there are no more cases in a, in a small country like Barbados or, or St. Lucia and, or Dominica as well, um, opening the borders is always going to be a risk of fresh people coming in carrying the virus. So it's, yeah, still. Um, 
there's still some questions that need to be answered, answered, even if, mm -hmm. you know, we, we come out of lockdown and start <clears throat> moving within our islands mm. um, again. We still have to think yeah, of. So OECS says they're going to open their borders together, which I think makes a lot of sense. That's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Like, um, mm. Just trade from between Grenada and St. Vincent, exactly. for example, like yeah. people going across on boats. I mean, borders are, are reasonably porous, um, for especially for those who are living closer together. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, decisions have to be made, and those decisions are tough, eh? Um, yeah. As Stuart is pointing mm -hmm. out, those decisions really go to the heart of people's lives. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as I say, lockdown is, I think, I advocate for, but yeah. I don't take it lightly. There's a reason why I said that. I also don't want to see people dying. Yeah, yeah I, I'm one for, for lockdown as well. But I think like Stuart said, I, I understand that I may be speaking from a privileged perspective of how I live, sure. but not so many people, you know, lockdown meant there are a lot of people who are in situations that they would rather not be because leaving the house during the day actually provided respite for whatever situation they might be living in mm -hmm. um, as well. So I, I advocate for it. The Caribbean is going to be interesting because of tourism. You know, if we open what's happening in the rest of the world, our main markets, are they still experiencing, you know, travel from New York to Jamaica yeah. and to, to the rest of the Caribbean? How is that going to be impacted from Europe who might still be experiencing big cases? So I don't underestimate the huge decisions that Caribbean leaders have to make at this time as to when is the best time to open up? Do you open up just the local economy to move about and then you open up to tourism and what's not? That's going to be some huge decisions to come in the next few weeks, I think. And I don't think those decisions are, are coming. Um, sadly, I see tourism returning. Um, lots of prime ministers are actually starting to talk about that. Mm -hmm. So um, it's a difficult decision when your economy is sometimes 40, 20, 30% uh, dependent on one industry. Um, mm -hmm. And it's hard because quite frankly, a lot of those people a lot of people work in those industries or industries that are related. So it's yeah. going to be very difficult to say um, not to take those people, but that taking people from areas in which there continues to be a yeah. high number is, is an incredible threat. Yeah, you expose the island to risk again and the risk yeah. of potentially another lockdown, which if you've got I to go through that the second time, yeah, it's more Our health more systems damaging. are not as robust as we would like them to be. And um, so the, the fact of the matter is it also is a cost. Hmm. It's a cost to, 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 to do that. So, um, yeah, it, I, I can't say that what the right thing will be. And I think only time will tell what the decisions mm -hmm that are going to be made, um, whether those decisions are good or bad. True. Um, but I, I would hate to be in that position, to be honest with you. So on that, on that point about decisions, um, let me bring Stuart in because it, it's, it's quite interesting to observe how leaders in the Caribbean have been performing over the course of this um, epidemic. I wonder what your thoughts are on how Jamaica has been led over the course of the, the pandemic so far. Um. <laughs> So it's funny because I made a tweet this morning um, speaking about some unconstitutional matters that came up. Outside of that, though, I'll be honest, I, I'm not upset with how Andrew has been our Prime Minister, following the man Andrew, like he's my friend. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, the not, I'm not upset with how the Prime Minister has been handling the matter so far. I see where he's trying to be delicate. Um, he didn't want to go full on lockdown from the beginning. He tried to phase it. I'm really not. I, I can understand why he did it because I think even if, if I was in the same position, I'd do the same thing. Um, because there are a lot of interests which have to be considered. Um, the problem I think that happened was because of the people. Um, our our pe and I guess it's a matter of desperation as well. Because, I mean, people have to work, they have to live, and they have to live. Um, so, whereas, I, as I said, I realize I'm privileged. I, when they started to say lockdown, I could say, okay, I'll stay in my house, I'll work from my house, I'll do this. But I understand that, for example, the call center, the people have to go to work. That's, yeah, some of them, that's probably their only means of income. Mm -hmm. And so, I don't, I can't blame them fully. 
Okay. But that was where the weaknesses came from. All of all of the decisions would have made greater impacts if people could actually follow through completely and say, okay, we'll stay at home. Mm. Uh, and so that's why I say I, I, I appreciate what he's doing. I I'm completely for it. Okay, and, and Charmaine, do you but, do you have a similar, I mean, similar I don't know position? You're going to account for humanity. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> what, what's your thoughts, Charmaine? Um, well, I'm more on the Queen Mia team. Um, I think our <laughs> <is fun>. oh. <laughs> um, and and the the proof is in the pudding. Um, so um, at the same time, I'm going to say I think that he's handling it very well, um, Mr. Holness Stuart. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's handled it very well. I think um, the communication has been exceptional. I certainly feel that we are probably over communicating. I don't listen personally. I make my mother listen and then she gives me the bullet points um, by WhatsApp because I think it's become a little bit overwhelming to have that constant stream of, of news about something which is um, a great danger. I have asthma. Um, my mother is over 65. Mm. So I can see where um, things, you know, there is an impending danger um, in my in my immediate family. Mm-hmm. So um, it, what what is for some people like an outside threat or something that's not as immediate, for mm. me is quite immediate. Like literally I could die. So, um, mm. and so could she. So yes, it's a situation in which I take it very seriously. I am like the super disinfecting. I am staying home. I am trying my best to do all delivery services. As to what said, there's a little bit of, of privilege in that, in that I can stock up. I can um, order food. Um, and not everybody can. And I, certainly I know lots of people so there are people who are working in the complex in which I live, for example, and I'm like, I think you should stay at home. And she's like, I can't. So um, difficult decisions are going to have to be made. Yeah. A person who works here has to come um, by public transportation. Um, she has to make those decisions on a day-to-day basis. And so, I mean, I help her with those decisions. But ultimately or help her to protect herself but ultimately who knows what's going to happen to her but she literally spoke to um the people who are in charge here and they said well what's going to happen if you don't come so yeah interesting, um, interesting. Just, yeah. just to take you back on a point there you said you said you're on queen mia team <laughs> explain the differences you saw in in that leadership there and why you're on queen mia team and obviously you support prime minister wholeness as well but w- yeah. why w- what do you see as the differences and 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 where things were done differently quite frankly i think all prime ministers in the region have us have responded um very appropriately for their situation to be mm. to be to be quite fair i just think um barbados was quick out of the out of the blocks to say um, we're going to shut it down even to the point where people were like they were overreacting um, at the beginning but I think uh, people are seeing why that was done now Um, and so I think shutting it off quickly or shutting the top off quickly to me is better than the trickling because the trickling leaves the same thing with sent um, with Trinidad and Tobago. Trinidad and Tobago um, said, all right, they're going to start introducing some measures and some people who are on a cruise ship and the people from the cruise ship come back with 40 odd cases. Um, And they have a whole hospital now just dedicated to these people having them isolated. So it is rough to say what is the perfect thing to do. Um, And certainly as I said, when this all blows over, as I hope it will very soon, we will be, we'll have like, it'll be a serious post-mortem as to who um, handle it best and so that we can do better the next time or, or learn from, from, from these things that have been done. Um, I but certainly, as, as I said, I have 
with regard to Jamaica, there are a lot of things that were done that were done right. Um, mm -hmm. There are a lot of things that are not so right. Um, excluding people who want to come home, for example, when you could put them in isolation. Some of those things, um, I'm not, you know, I, I'm not in full agreement with, but I understand the basis for the decisions because those, the basis for those decisions have been communicated. Yeah. Also, is important. So the truth yeah. is that we actually understand if people don't agree with. Yeah. Okay. So, so just on a, a point that you mentioned there, Charmaine, about learning. Where, where do you think? And, and Stuart, I'll be keen to hear your view on this as well. What do you think are the key areas of learning for the Caribbean from this whole pandemic? Yeah. Stuart, take it first. <laughs> um, key areas of learning. Oh, for one, I think we will start to, well, we, we have to start looking back at our health systems a little bit more. Um, in, in Jamaica, for example, uh, well, we've had free healthcare for a while now. Um, it's, but because of the free healthcare, I think the health system was somewhat weakened. Um, because, I mean, it's hard to continue to fund that on the public purse. Um, I can see where it has helped people. Of course, healthcare is always useful. Uh, but I think we have to look at revamping our health systems for something like this in the future. And I also think another thing that we really have to look at is diversifying. We can't continue to rely on tourism. It's, it's simply yeah. unsustainable if yeah. we can literally, the entire Caribbean, most of, well, probably except Trinidad, but most of our economies are currently tanking simply because or they will tank simply because, you know, we have lost our major source of foreign exchange and work. Yeah. At this point in time, somebody needs, we, we would have to sit down and say, okay, how else can we um, carry the economy forward? I've always personally been supportive of a knowledge-based economy, similar to India. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, implementing that is a whole other ball game. I, I have no idea. Mm -hmm. But to me, those two things are the major concerns. Um, the reliance on the on tourists and America cannot continue because yeah. I mean, even Cayman had that issue where they were trying to bring in masks and the U.S. stopped it. I understand why the U.S. stopped it. I mean, they want the masks too, but that that to me shows that we we need to look back and say, all right, how else can we address? these issues if they come up again if it comes yeah, up show, another show years, how vulnerable we are exactly we can't continue to be this vulnerable because we have resources um and we can trade with people that are not america and europe there's a whole other south southern part of the world i yeah. because of my job i always hear about south south um partnerships which is africa we have africa we have south america and we have us we can look a little bit more into trading in that direction so that we can yeah. protect ourselves more if this issue should arise again. Yeah, excellent yeah. point. Excellent, good point. excellent point. Charmaine? Um, going digital, I think, is going to be um, the thing that comes out of this, which for the region will be the most useful thing. So even people who are used to banking and walking into the branch, because no, literally you can't, um, in, in some cases, um, you have to, like all transactions, one bank said all transactions that can be done at an ATM or from your mobile app, etc., will not be honored in the bank. So in other words, if you are not using the tools that we've given you, we, you're not going to be doing it. You're not going to be in the bank at all, just because they need to also protect their staff, which I have no issues with. But one of the things that are, is going to come out of it is people are going to be doing that. So kids are going to be going increasingly using um, resources to go to school that are going to be from the computer rather than um, yeah. only going into a physical class. Yeah. Um, people are going to be trading more um, on using these services. The yeah. fact that I can sit here and um, a man comes up to me with, 
um, things from the wholesale clubs that are here. Um, that's something that I hope will continue. All of a sudden, these things that we're seeing, digital signatures, being able to trade, you know, everybody, all the banks now, or sorry, I, I shouldn't say banks, actually, I really should say, all the brokerage houses are saying, are opening up um, to stock trading from your computer, which you you could do that from um, JTrader, which is Jamaica Stock Exchange, but know that you can do it from your own account is amazing because you can start to fund yeah. it. Um, it. It just is so much easier. And then you're like, why didn't these things happen? Happen before. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Three, four years ago, but they're yeah. happening now because of need. And But those things won't go away, I assume. Um, so the truth of the matter is I think digital is going to come out of it. And also just working from home. Um, yeah. Quite oh, God. <laughs> Um, <laughs> something that probably a few weeks ago they said that we couldn't do. I, I, I so, love it. That's uh, yeah. so, a few weeks uh, ago it was said we, we couldn't do it. We can't do it. And all of a sudden the whole world's doing it. One organization I, 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 I worked with has been piloting working from home for years. And I, I come back here now and all of a sudden working from home is a thing. Um, and the rules that could not have been um, implemented all of a sudden, boom, are implemented. <laughs> yes. So you couldn't, I, I remember in my time at, at that organization, I was told that you can't performance manage someone who is not working at, the, at in the, the office, at yeah. place where you can see them. Yeah. And I'm like, but none of their output has anything to do with my site. Like I don't have to see them to do these things. There was and also was questions like, around productivity as well, that everyone would be less productive. I was, to, I, was <laughs> I was told, because I am a person who, if I need to concentrate, and particularly, you know, open plan offices, I can do it in the open. So I yeah, used like to go quiet. home. And I was told at one point, I can't do that anymore. I said, well, <laughs> you decide. What do you want? Do you want these things coming out at a good rate? well done or do you want me to phone it in and the argument finished at that point and i continued to do what i was doing but these are things that are now basic yeah um yeah. and yeah. Yeah. i do if if we roll back on this i think it will be the biggest disservice and yeah. this is true in almost all of the region yeah went to cry personally yeah <laughs> Yeah, I enjoy oh, working. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry, Stuart, you were saying something? Oh, no, I said I, I personally cry every roll, roll back on this because I enjoy working from home. I, yeah. I, I, can, I did not see, especially in my current job, I did not see a reason for me to be at work every day. Mm -hmm. And now it's being shown that, you know, I can actually do a lot of my job at home. I mean, yeah. Um, I am an attorney, so I do have to go to court, fine. Yeah. Yeah. But outside of that, I, I don't need to be at my desk every single day. Yeah. It, yeah. And this, is, this has been to me enlightening, and I really hope somebody sitting down going, you know, we can do this, and we can yeah. continue it. Yeah, just yeah. the environment alone, I mean, quite frankly, just like, piles of people. I don't remember, I don't know what Stuart's commute is, but it has to be over an hour to come into Kingston. Um, two hours every day. Every day. One hour to one hour back. Yes, yeah. so two hours a day. I was going um, to bring that up actually, because um, yeah, for me as well, I don't have to commute into work anymore. And it's given me these additional two exactly. hours or so that I can do other things with in my life. So I'm doing a lot yeah. more, more reading, a bit more writing, a lot more reflection. What about you guys? Are, is there anything new or addition that you're doing with this additional time? I think because of the, the, the it's trying not to go crazy just yet, I've gone back into gaming. Truthfully, let me tell you, I used to play games a lot. I used to game <laughs> regularly. Then I got a job and then that went down. And no, so like I've had the PS4 and I'll tell you for the past year maybe two years i i didn't play that much mm -hmm. suddenly my ps4 is sick and tired of me 
because <laughs> I said, <laughs> no, I'm giving it hours a day. So I've gotten back into this and I've started reading. Yeah, yeah I, got, I started reading a couple of books, um, which I, I also haven't had time to do. I've been mainly reading for work. Um, but I haven't really looked into any new hobbies as yet or not like that. But mm. I can see where it's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. only so much games I can play before I go, all right, I'm tired again. <laughs> <Fair enough. laughs> I'm not doing anything really productive with my time, to be honest with you. So like a lot of my friends are like cooking down the place and learning how to make bread. And I'm really in awe of them for that. Um, I just wish all this cooking would continue where I can come over and eat. There you um, go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying that, to that, that's as more time. Yeah, well, <laughs> the better they get, yeah. by the time it gets to the point where we can come over, it would yeah. only benefit you. Yeah. So, um, but like I'm seeing a lot of that where people are doing that. I personally am um, watching a lot more TV, particularly like older movies. Like yesterday, I watched Jaws again for the I don't know, 174th. Time. Jaws is becoming popular. You're like the fourth person I heard yeah, say they've yeah. watched Jaws. <laughs> Jaws wow. Seriously, everyone's like going God, back to Jaws. Jaws one or two. One or two, though. You got to, which one? Yes, I watched, I watched one, two, and three over the last couple of days. And, <laughs> it's um, become a like, thing. I don't understand it. It's, but Jaws has become a thing. Why, like, it's <laughs> just like the escape of another type of disaster. <laughs> <laughs> No, no. Yeah. And last night I watched Out of Africa. Um, oh, so wow. it's just like kind of like old, maybe a little bit of nostalgia. Maybe that's mm. what it is. Yeah. And like rereading books. And sometimes in some cases, um, just because like I have a, a, a decent library, reading books for the first time, quite frankly, um, mm. that I have in, in, in my house mm. and stuff that I can get on Kindle. So, um, I think it's become a time of greater introspection. Also, I find that also people are reaching out a lot more. I don't yeah. know if you guys mm. are seeing that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah. I, I've found I've probably communicated with yeah. people that I haven't been communicated with yeah. that yeah. much before this period, yeah. probably two, three times as much more during this time than, than before. I don't know why that is when I could have before, but all of a sudden people that I could see all the time, I'm having more online conversations with than ever before. Right, so maybe it is going to be a return to greater communication and being more present with your friendships and relationships. And also I think that's also a nice thing that's coming out of this. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. absolutely. So if you, if you were going to um, leave one word of advice to our brothers and sisters who, and, and, and other viewers who are going to be watching this, I wonder what that would be from, from either of you, actually. Kindness. Be kind to yourself and be kind to others. Like, this is a time for just letting um, the self go and being good to others. And being good to others, literally, some of it is the staying home. Um, some of it is just if you have an older person in your life, getting groceries for that person. Yeah. Whilst yeah. being kind to yourself, um, stop worrying about whether the house is clean and <laughs> if we are showered today. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's all you can do to just like be and to survive this thing. Yeah. Go yeah. with that. Be kind. Absolutely. That sounds good. I agree. Stuart, I think I'm, a, I'm trying to think of a word and I can't come up with one. I, the first word that came to my mind was to be, well, consideration, which is just, it, it's, a, it's kind of an extension of what Charmaine said, but yeah, you have to be considerate of your neighbors and the people around you um, mm. as much as possible. See where you can help them. Um, it, it's, it's rough for everybody and you need to we need to appreciate that, you know, we're in a privileged position and help as much as you can. I can tell you that well, I don't want to be too low about it because it's done kind of privately, but we made some, my family made some donations to, um, for some health, what would you call it now? PPE. PPE. We, don't, we donated some PPE, personal protective equipment, um, and things like that. Yeah, things like that are just things you have to 
you have to really look into more. I mean, there are people who are going out there currently trying to keep my country safe. So as much as possible, help them out. We consider consider their jobs and try not to be too um, angry at the fact that, as I said before, I know every crack in my wall and, all, and I had time to sit down before and say, you know, I'm not going to show them the Bob Marley poster. That don't make any sense. Show them the Ronaldo yeah. poster. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> don't let that get to you. Consider everybody's position. Yeah. Yeah. Consider. yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I agree with those two things there. For me, one of the things I've been being a, a lot more is of just aware, just awareness, awareness of some of the key people that really impact your life and, and you know, not just personal relationships, but just jobs and stuff that, that you don't necessarily pay attention to that are all of a sudden during this time that's keeping everything moving and to be really appreciative of that, whether it be bus drivers or train drivers over here, um, people, you know, EMTs and the ambulances and hospital nurses and that kind of stuff. Even the bin men who still managing to join this time when other people are home to come out and still keep the place clean and just being aware and appreciative. So that's, so, so you're right. I think yeah. during this time, you've just become more aware of things that are wrong. You Con where consideration and stuff is concerned and just be kind as well. So I, I agree with that. That's good. Phil, anything from you? No, I was just going to add. Yeah, I think kindness is definitely a word. The other word I would add to kindness is perseverance. Yeah. You know, I think if there's anything coming out of this, it is really teaching us how to, how to persevere and how to, to think hopefully. So my thing I'd be saying to others is um, plan for the worst and hope for the best. <laughs> it's sort of, yeah. sort of the advice I can give of how to persevere and get through this. Yeah. 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 Well, well, listen, um, Charmaine and Stuart, it's been a real wonderful opportunity to have connected to you guys in the living room. Sure. And it's, it's been a real honor for us to have you to talk to you and to understand how things are playing out in Jamaica. Yeah. And, and we really want to be able to keep in touch with you over the course of the weeks and months ahead. So thank you so much for joining us today, guys. Yeah. Let's do it. Don't worry about it. Though. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, indeed, indeed. Yeah, my, Hi guys, it my, was my great. Connection just weakened a while ago. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, that's okay. But yeah, <laughs> but yeah. Thanks, thanks for having me. I heard most of what you said, Mark. No, no, no. <laughs> thank, thank you, so you guys. Much, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate guys. it. Thank you. Bye. 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 See you. Hey guys, that was good. Yeah, uh, very, very. Yeah, yeah. Very, very interesting um, perspectives there. You know, Kingston, St. Catherine. And, you know, even from the political side as well, just understanding what's happening. Mm -hmm. That's Corbin. Forgot to go on mute. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I thought you were just going to break up the song there, Mark. <laughs> you, you, you realize how he froze that he was like, what's that? And he was like, can I, can I play it? <laughs> I, thought, I, thought, I actually thought he was sitting playing the piano and <laughs> Oh, you thought he was going to oh, give us a, a, oh, a bit of an outro. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's still I have beautiful. absolutely no idea what happened. The funny happened thing, he actually thought we can see him moving. He was like... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, oh, That's it. Anyway. Carry on, what you were saying? No, I, I would say, I think it was really good perspectives. Um, and it was good to at least see how Jamaica is handling the crisis to recognize that they have got some challenges internally between, you know, just two neighboring parishes mm -hmm. and the approach being very, very different. Yeah. So I think they've got a big journey ahead, but at least I think it was very, Stuart and, Stuart and Charmaine were very open. And I really, really enjoyed having a chat with them, actually. That's funny that I, I agree. It's funny that they're, they're saying some of the same things that people here are saying, you know, constantly in my circle, people say, you know, it's great for me. It's great being home. We can sit outside in the sun right now that we have sun, these two weeks of sun in Manchester, yeah. you know, but, but then they always say, but we know we are a bit privileged and there are others <laughs> out there who are not yes. having that same experience. Mm -hmm. But I think this is, this seems to be a, a global um, recognition that people are suddenly you know, enjoying them, what, what they have, but thinking of others and realizing, yeah. hold on. Yeah. You know, I have no, I have no real control over this, my circumstance. Absolutely. Yeah. I can't really enjoy it. Yeah. 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 And, and just, you're right there, Phil. And just the recognition that you might be in a privileged pers uh, position, whereas before you probably didn't even think you were. Yeah. You know, 
but when you're now in the face with this situation, you realize, but hang on, I'm at home. As you say, you can sit in the sun. Carol was in the sun working yesterday outside on the patio <laughs> under the, <laughs> under the umbrella. And you're like, Oh, well, are, are you a grass? <laughs> not on the grass, <laughs> not on my grass. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't, I didn't you, get that. you know the rules. You yeah, know the yeah. rules. rules. <laughs> you know the rules. But, Talking about but, privilege. <laughs> I just put an example of privilege, right? Talking about grass. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I hold my hand up, <laughs> you know, but it, it's good still that even in the midst of that, that you finally pause to recognize other people because the, the, the natural inclination could be to look inward and to only look at yourself and say, okay, I need to protect me and my mm -hmm. family and let the rest of the world go by. Yeah. But even in that time, people are having moments of reflection all the time of yeah. recognizing where they are and then thinking that others may not be in a similar uh, situation. So I think that, that that's a good thing. And let's hope when we come out of that, that yeah. people are still in a position where they're thinking about other people as well. Um, yeah. You know, so, so that was a good thing. I think the other thing also was their view on the, the leadership across the Caribbean, where they were very complimentary. Yeah. And felt that across the board, actually Caribbean leaders have done quite a good job. And I think Charmaine's point about how we readjust post COVID and, and become a digital, um, more digitally aware economy was also very, very insightful. So mm. I quite, in, I really enjoyed their perspectives today. Yeah. I, I also like the, um, the excitement about what could happen for the Caribbean after, you know, yeah. that we actually open up our borders together yes. and work together. I think yes. that's, there's something exciting about that. Absolutely. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I think so. I think, uh, you know, as, as we were making the point that finally Caribbean countries might be realizing how the vulnerable position that we are mm -hmm. thinking in individualistically or insularly and not, not working together. Let's hope that coming out of this, that that mindset still remains and recognition that we need to forge um, closer links, um, closer probably even economies closer mm -hmm. trade, how we look at things and perhaps mm -hmm. look at the world and go out into the world together as opposed to be, you know, dispersed or separately. So let's hope that that, yeah. that, that continues. Yeah. Look, everyone, we just want to thank you so much for joining us again today in the living room. Hope you enjoyed yeah. that discussion from um, our friends in Jamaica, uh, Stuart and uh, Charmaine, and listening to the perspective and the different things that are going on in Jamaica. Um, thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you soon. All right, over and out. See you. All right, I'll be finished with space there. I could cut now. I'm just going to cut Perfect. off in two seconds. Good.